The Denver Nuggets have finally done it. World champs for the first time in franchise history. Nikola Jokic, Jamal Murray, Aaron Gordon, Michael Porter Jr., and a cast of intelligent, fundamentally sound, egoless, and hardworking individuals have done what many gave them zero chance of achieving, that being the ultimate glory. Denver, Colorado, stand up, as you all deserve to throw a parade inside your city like John ja Morant would say, and in the words of Stephen Curry, what they gonna say now? I'll say this, finishing the postseason 10-1 at Ball Arena, shout out to the Nuggets faithful for bringing elite energy all playoffs long. I had goosebumps watching the Serbian sensation and Jokic celebrating with his family, as it's just great to see such a humble individual celebrate like that. It's amazing that Nikola's first reaction after winning the title was to give a handshake to quite literally every player on the opposing Miami Heat team. The man is selfless, and between the lines, shame on Stephen A for saying that he doesn't thrive as a post-up player because the dominance down low we just witnessed from the Joker was as beastly as anything I've seen on tape since Shaquille O'Neal. Let's stop calling him strictly an all-time great passer, let's certainly stop disrespectfully calling him a stat patter, and let's start calling him an absolute locomotive down low in the post. Kendrick Perkins should now be officially removed from ESPN at this point, if that company has any respect for itself, because Perk straight up changed the narrative after calling MVP voters racist when Nikola was widely regarded as the favorite to win his third straight MVP. Instead, the award went to a man who scored 15 points on 5 for 18 shooting in Game 7 of not the NBA or Conference Finals, but the second round. And I get Jokic is too humble to say that Embiid shouldn't have won the award, calling those who said Joel shouldn't have got it quote-unquote mean. Maybe that's the case, but I'm gonna talk that shit for my guy Jokic in saying that he should have easily won his third straight Most Valuable Player award, as I've said for a while. Now that award could mean less to Nikola, however, as he just won the most crucial award, the Finals MVP. We just saw Jokic average a definitively monster 30 points and 14 rebounds per night over five outings to take down Jimmy Butler and the Miami Heat in the NBA Finals. Unbelievable production, but stats aside, and by the eye test alone, if you paid attention to every second of these finals by tuning in, you could see that Nikola's on-court production was 10 times as dominant as those 30 and 14 averages portrayed which says a lot. In terms of his efficiency, the best player on earth made 58% of his field goals, shot 42% from deep range, and had a true shooting percentage of 67.3. With all of that said, the Nuggets wouldn't be anywhere close to their first title of all time if it wasn't for Jamal Murray. JM27 deserves so much credit for his playmaking, vocal leadership, general determination, not to mention lethal three-level scoring. And it's that last point where Blue Arrow's impact is really felt. He proved he can be an elite bucket getter from the mid-range with his Kobe-esque fallaways, from deep with his Curry-esque quick twitch release, and on the drive with his Dwayne Wade-esque slashing, threw down multiple posters in this series that were incredible. For a guy to have the shooting stroke that he does and to be able to dunk like that is just insane. Before getting to the wing players who helped make this team overwhelming on the glass in the likes of Aaron Gordon, Michael Porter Jr., and Christian Brown, among others who helped this Denver dream become a reality, let's give big time ups to Michael Malone. Mike Malone was fittingly the best coach in the NBA from start to finish this year, and while he received a lot of flack at one point from Nuggets fans in the season, whether it was his sound substitutions to pick the perfect set of players to fill out the rotation, his mixing up of the offensive play sets, or most prominently, his motivational words. He had everything going for himself. His coaching staff, fueled by top assistants in David Adelman and Ryan Saunders, proved how valuable having the right men in charge around the primary man in charge really is. Much more credit over the coming weeks and months will be granted to the extremely sound Denver coaching staff. But where would the Nuggets be without Aaron Gordon is another big time question. AG was a beast at defending the perimeter, and the trade that Denver made at 2021's deadline was a fundamental part of this championship alignment. 
Aaron's defense in a film breakdown will certainly be put together very shortly on this channel. Speaking of wing players about to receive a ton of attention from this channel, how about the player who had the very first D-Flow Hoops video ever made about him in Michael Porter Jr.? Several months before being selected by Denver, we broke down how the number one recruit coming out of high school would fare after suffering a back injury and missing all but a few games in his lone year at Missouri. The number 14 pick in 2018's draft has definitely come full circle, especially with how he showed up in the closeout game five. MPJ dropped 16 important points, but more focally, a playoff career high 13 rebounds, which were massive. Contavious Caldwell Pope is now a two-time NBA champion, and like Porter Jr., was a primary contributor in game five to close out Miami. After the Heat score the first five points of the game, Pope responded with the first four points of the game for Denver and finished with 11 points, two steals, and three blocks. The length and intensity that KCP provided was also fundamental in helping get this Denver team to championship striking distance in the first place, as the trade that sent he and Ish Smith from Washington to the mile high was fundamental. Speaking of 2022 offseason acquisitions, Bruce Brown was as important as anyone they acquired. Bruce helped win this team their second consecutive game in Miami on outing before Game 5 by scoring 21 points, and the man was just such a reliable force for Denver on both sides of the floor. Bruce was also a big-time presence on the glass, so another big-time pickup by GM Calvin Booth to bring in Double B2. Don't forget about their draft pick from last year, Christian Brown, who's now become the fifth player of all time to win an NCAA title and an NBA championship in back-to-back -back years. Christian was huge. We talked about him in a separate video recently. Then there's the veterans and all the players who took a back seat slash contributed to the vibe enhancement rather than causing a fuss in the locker room after seeing their minutes evaporated. Your Zeke Najis of the world, your Thomas Bryant's of the world, your Vladko Kankars of the world, your Reggie Jacksons of the world. These are the players who had firmly cemented spots on the rotation throughout the year, didn't hear their names called in the playoffs, but seamlessly kept the vibes up. Youngins and Peyton Watson and Colin Gillespie also deserve big time shoutouts. They were a part of this as well. DeAndre Jordan is now an all-star and an NBA champion. Jeff Green is now an NBA champion. Jordan and Green had solid contributions to this championship on the court, but DeAndre and Jeff's biggest impact came with their mentorship of Murray and Jokic. Without the veterans making an incredible influence like they did, Denver wouldn't be here. Specifically, it was Jeff Green who came through in these playoffs in particular when it comes to on the court, whether it was hitting threes, throwing down jams, or defending on the wing. DJ had his moments on the court as well, albeit playing his first minutes of the playoffs since the first round in Game 5, but it was how DeAndre got the best out of those around him that now have given the former Lob City Phenom the label of NBA champ. It's great to see a guy I grew up watching in DeAndre Jordan achieve such an accomplishment. All in all, whether it was the days of Dikembe Mutombo, Alex English, David Thompson, or Carmelo Anthony, much respect to those legends for paving the way for what's about to occur across all of Colorado, parades inside their cities. The biggest parade will occur down Spear Boulevard in the heart of Denver, where hundreds of thousands will gather to celebrate to prove those claiming the city isn't a basketball town dead wrong. And there are just so many examples of this Nuggets team proving the media wrong, which is what makes this championship 1,000 times more sweet for those about to experience all that comes along with winning an NBA title. Congratulations to the Mile High City, meaning everyone who had an impact in Ball Arena or watching at home. Congratulations to the entire state of Colorado. Enjoy this enjoyment in which we'll be contributing to on this channel. If you want to see more Nuggets content, help the channel reach 100k by subscribing. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.